Hello, wild ones. Welcome to the Unleash Your Wild Gypsy Soul Summit. Today I have somebody, I have synchronicity today. I have magic today and hopefully a little, even a little mayhem. That would be really fun to put in <laughs> it. Um, I have with us Amanda Eloish Johnson and I'm just going to read this because um, I do better that way. So she is a spiritual success mentor. She's an international speaker, a teacher. She's educated and, and initiated as a counseling psychologist, expressive arts therapist, integrative medicine practitioner, ordained priestess and shamanic healer. She's authored several books, Unlocking Your Success Code, Subconscious Success Repatterning, Go Ask Alice Oracle and Tea Party Game. She has a book coming up called Sexual Bliss Through Good Housekeeping, The Extraordinary Woman's Guide to Having It All. She shared her visions with thousands in 20 different countries, including Oroville, India, the Prana Festival in New Zealand, California Institute for Integral Studies, and Google. She has 30 years, so for over 30 years, she's dedicated herself to research and study of the subconscious and its untapped and infinite potential. She's the founder of the Living Wisdom School, the steward of the Center for Living Wisdom, and minister for Medicine Path Native American Church. She's an expert in helping professional women and men break through limiting, and I am so thrilled to have her. Welcome, 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 Amanda. So good to be here. Really an honor. Hey, so I don't really know how I found her, except through <laughs> Divine Providence. When we were talking, we do a little initial get to know you kind of call between the experts and I, and we found out we had like crazy things in common. <laughs> and I, I love it because it's so, it's such a perfect example of when you trust and um, of what can happen. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I just had an intent that I was going to just get some amazing women on this um, summit and so I don't want to tell the story. I want you to tell it. What? Tell everyone all of these freaking amazing <laughs> coincidences in our life. Well, we grew up in the same neighborhood, just about six years apart and just a few blocks apart. And I went briefly to the same high school that you graduated from. We both grew up Mormon. We both made an exodus from being Mormon. And our beautiful uh, entrepreneurs, who also happen to be blonde. <laughs> it's, a, it's a common Utah theme. Uh, and who are very passionate about totally embracing the wild, deep, shakti sexual nature of the sacred feminine and weaving it into making a beautiful, amazing, successful life. Yeah. And there's probably some more, but those are the ones that stand out to me. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy because we're sitting there talking and she's telling me about where she used to ride her bicycle down these, these <laughs> like, empty fields until there was like this toxic waste, which I didn't know about. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I did the same thing. It was like, it just to me, it was crazy. And you just let the cat out of the bag about the whole Mormon thing for me, but <laughs> I actually don't talk about it. And I'm like, ah, oh, who? <laughs> I think it's great to go from the, you know, the idea of the goody goody Mormon to, um, you know, ha ha something totally different and uh, embracing both the full spectrum. Yeah. So what was it? I'm actually going to start there just because that came up. What was it? Not, I, I don't want to get into any church bashing or anything like yeah. that, but what was missing for you that you went out to find some mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't bash the Mormon church at all. I'm really grateful for my upbringing, really good, solid family Me values. Me and I'm very close. So I'm, I'm here in my mom's living room. Um, and for me, what was missing was the sacred feminine, which is the wild, unpredictable, uh, unknowable, untamable source that can scare a lot of people. But that, that to me, like that's the, that's the spice that, that creates passion and creativity and spark and juiciness. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same thing for me. It was just that, that 
part of myself that I, you know, and I grew up without sisters. And so I was always looking for that feminine kind of role model kind of, and, you know, like how to be. And, and I didn't really realize what I was, you know, I was like, maybe I thought it was like, I wanted to know how to style my hair. I wanted to, you know, know how to talk to boys or I, but, but it was, it was actually the how to be the feminine. And as I'm studying now, it's been so stripped away from us. Mm-hmm. that knowledge of actually mm-hmm. the feminine power that we have. And I didn't realize that's what I was hungry for, but I mm-hmm. really was. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I want to dive deeper into that because the whole wild theme and the whole unleashing is really about getting into our inner wild, into our inner soul, which is the feminine. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're, most of us, there are some men that have signed up for the summit, but most of us are feminine and the men have the feminine inside of them too. It's yeah. not, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not excluding them because actually embracing and pulling that in. But, um, mm-hmm. but so the whole while, the whole, let's talk about what is the wild gypsy soul to you? What is your inner wild? What does that mean to you? And how does that fit in with your work? Mm -hmm. For me, the wild gypsy soul is really tuning into source. So I've, I've been fortunate my whole life because of the upbringing of prayer of really being given permission to access directly source. Um, And I've just been given messages my whole life. And sometimes they've been really scary, like quit your job you know, and, and become an entrepreneur and, uh, do, do very scary things that my ego self was a bit horrified of doing. But my personal experience has been that every time I listen to that part of me, no matter what feels might be at stake, friends, family, job, you know, well, you know, safety and security, Every time I've listened to that voice, it has always led me to something much better than I could have imagined for myself. It's always been a really powerful uh, rite of passage, for sure, and it's given me so much strength internally and knowledge about myself and my shadow side and where my edges are, and then it's helped me to expand and grow and be in this deep trusting relationship with the unknowable, um, you know, getting little peeks into um, how to live my life in a way that's much bigger than my little ego could have made up for myself. Mm, That's, that's gorgeous. And I love that you are so articulate in what the benefits from the trusting have been for you. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of what I've been feeling for myself through this summit is wanting to ask everybody about how do you trust when you can't trust when you're in those kind of things. And one thing that I haven't been focusing on is what happens after that. And so the whole, the, that you brought in those benefits is really, I feel like um, it's an important element to, Mm -hmm. for people to kind of say, you know what, after yeah. This is the things that you want really are there. The things yes. that you want want you kind of, you know, a little roomy in there. Um, mm-hmm. So let's just let's talk, let's let's swing it back into the feminine some more. What is um, the divine feminine to you? Why why should we even care? Mm-hmm. Why, you know, mm-hmm. let, let's yeah. Yeah. And it's playing out in the world right now in such yeah. an interesting way. Yeah. Um, but there's so much, there's still, and I think that there's people here that really don't quite have a vision of yeah. what that is. So can you yeah. it for us? Yeah, I'm happy to share. I mean, the sacred feminine, just like all of, all of that's holy and beyond our ego is ineffable, you know? So talking about it is such a, a limited uh, little, little speck. Um, But for me, in the, gosh, 13 plus years I've been studying and then my whole life where she's been showing up and speaking to me directly, my experience of her, of the sacred feminine face of the holy, because there is definitely masculine and then there's asexual, there's, you know, multiple, I experienced the holy in all many different ways. 
Um, but I've been called as a priestess to bring in and a teacher to bring in the sacred feminine wisdom, the sacred feminine mysteries, because they are um, they've gone underground because uh, they weren't safe. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give a whole history of why and how that happened, but. Um, but a, a lot of our, the way that money and government and just city, city planning works, it's all based on a very masculine structure and that's, that's important. The structure is important. Um, and without the balance of the feminine, which is, um, more, uh, about receptivity, it's more about stillness. It's about, um, allowance. It's about for me, manifesting without working so hard at it, without the aggression, um, without the, the hard effort, not that things don't require some muscle and sweat, but it's about really allowing what is and really being um, aware of how things are unfolding. So for me, I can't know the sacred feminine. I can't know exactly how she's going to unfold but to be open and aware and paying attention to what's happening in every moment, she's constantly communicating if we're willing to open our, our eyes and our minds to her. So um, one of the things that I've found um, as my business has become more successful is that uh, usually when things slow down in my business, that's a, that's a signal for most people to get busy, you know, work harder. For me, it's a signal that you slow down too. Slow down, be receptive, you know, allow things to come. The embrace. Uh, the sacred feminine is about nourishment. The sacred feminine is about building relationship and connection, which is so lacking because relationships take time. They require our constant engagement. Whereas if we have like a system, a machine, a formula we can follow, then we can just bang stuff out, right? Right. Put, put things out with efficiency. But one of my teachers, Martine Prechtel, says that efficiency is like that that's kills the holy, you know, trying to hurry and get stuff done. Instead, stopping and being in relationship with each other. So many, like our relation, you know, how we connected, so many things that have manifested in my life have happened because spirit said, go, go to the store right now, you know, um, pick up the phone and call this person, take 10 extra minutes to dive into this relationship with this person. And then there's a connection that gets made that puts me in touch with something else and then something else. And then a big door opens up. And so, um, the sacred feminine really is about, uh, more stillness, low, <laughs> slow, still regenerative, nourishing, um, allowing, uh, yeah, relational, relational, and, and really allowing the, the possibility that you can get things done at the speed of light when you stop. That is really, it's hard to wrap your head around that, that you can get mm -hmm. things done if you, when you stop that, you know, that because it, it just hasn't been, you know, I don't know how many times in my life I've seen that. I've experienced it, but I don't know how many, but only because I was tuned in to be aware. Yeah. Um, so one thing that's coming up for me that I wanted to ask you about was A, the word receptivity popped in my head right before you yeah. said it. So I think that I want to go into that. But also, and it may be the same thing, I want to know what do you have for us on how we can trust yeah. how we can tune into those impulses. Like you said, yes. go to the store right now. You know, yeah. when those messages come in, how, yeah. how do we decipher what's maybe just brain chatter, what's really a message exactly. or even encourage, Hey universe, I'm ready. I want more. Come yeah. on, talk to me. That is such a great question, Paula. I mean, I, I think that that is, that is one of the big questions of anybody who's, who's seeking greater consciousness because we all know that we have fears and we all know that we have old stories of wounding and limiting cultures that we grow up in that tell us this is the way it's supposed to be it's meant to help us and it does in many ways but it also limits us and our fear and you know 
triggers us to take action quite frequently. In fact, on, on the subconscious level, we've got survival patterns that operate us and they control 90% of what we do. Wow. Yeah. And so our conscious selves, no matter how much we evolve and have that higher consciousness and tune in, uh, it, it really requires uh, being able to be familiar with our shadow. If, you know, and that most of us label that, try to shove it away, try to avoid it, try to deny it. And so then when it speaks to us, it can feel like deep wisdom because our, those patterns are really clever and they use resistance, they use logic, uh, they use all different kinds of ways that sound perfectly logical to make sure that we're surviving. And they, they do a good job. You know, we're still alive. But for those of us who don't want to just be at survival level, we want to have a beautiful life where we have time to be in our personal practice. We want to cultivate healthy, loving relationships. We want to give back to our communities and have a good quality life. It, it's counter to that. And, and so our, we're spending all this time in our conscious selves, that 10%, to have that better life and then we've got that 90%. So a lot of it is becoming, first of all, I mean, I've been working on it for many years, but you have to be willing to bring a loving, accepting, curious mind towards our shadow. What is, you know, why, what does it feel like when I'm afraid? What is that even like? Um, what, do, what do my fears sound like? What are my fears? What triggers my fears? And once you get a pretty good idea of what that is, and then you can start different, and then you have to also give yourself time to tune in, to listen, to be still, and to be receptive to those other voices, which are beyond our even highest consciousness, to, to feel that. And once you give yourself some time to know yourself, to know your shadow, to know your limitations, and then you're also listening to those higher voices are however you choose to, you know, see them, whether they're our ancestors, our ascended masters, simply our higher, highest consciousness that's beyond the limits of the human experience. Um, then you become familiar with the difference and it feels very different and you can start to differentiate and know, Oh, that's my fear talking. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, Let's listen to that so that we know what it's saying so that we can be aware what messages it's sending. And now let's listen to this other piece that's available to us and let that guide. Mm. And that's the, that's the heart of what I do because there's so many people that, uh, that are healers that are here to do something big in the world. They recognize at some point, like I've been putting all this time and energy. I have something big to offer the world. And, and I'm tuning into these higher sources of wisdom and I have these special codes and mysteries and practices to share with the world. And then somehow I keep getting tripped up. How is that possible? And that's because there's, there are those two ways that we get those inner promptings. Some of them are divine, higher consciousness. Some of them are those stuck patterns. Mm. That's brilliant. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So those, those that are coming up that are the stuck patterns, that are the conditioning, yeah. um, I want to know from you what you have on healing them. And I want to just preface it a little bit with just a, an example of right before we signed on. I am um, living in a property that has a courtyard, and so there's, all the, there's, there's these cottages that are shared with each other and there's a dog in the cottage across <laughs> whose mom and dad aren't home right now. And he goes absolutely crazy. <laughs> it drives me crazy. And, um, and I've, you know, it's just got to the point where I'm like, and I was saying to you, can you hear the dog? And, and, and I'm, and you're like, and she says to me, so Amanda says, <laughs> Oh, the poor thing sent him love. And I'm like, Oh, rather than sending him my annoyance and rather than, you know, that kind of to the softening, the receptivity. I mean, it was a perfect example of that whole feminine into yeah. that. And 
what I'm wondering is when we have those things that are coming up, those subconscious programs, those whatever, mm -hmm. how can we meet that so that we can heal it? Yeah. Because when we're, you know, when it's right there, yeah. how, do, how do we heal it? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question too. And that's, that's why I wrote the book, um, Unlock Your Success Code, Subconscious Success Repatterning. It's all about how, how the step-by-step -step process that I use to heal myself, use to get, because I still have fears that come up that try to run the show. Mm -hmm. So I still have to use this process and it's what I teach my clients. And the first step is, first of all, to be curious, you know, instead of like, you know, like, Okay, so there's the err uh, that's come up. So for me, that's a little red flag that's saying, I need your help, right? I need, I need your help because the, mm. the, it's just like physical pain. You know, if we hurt ourselves like, oh, what, do, what did I do? Do I need a bandage? Do I just need to kiss it? You know, some Arnica oil, what do I need? And so there's the curiosity. Hey, there's, there's an irritation. There's something that I don't like. So instead of just getting caught up and being angry or upset about it, I'm going to get curious. What's going on here? There's an alarm going off. Hey, let's get curious. What's happening? And so then we bring that, um, and it, it can be, you know, can take a little time to learn how to do this really well, but to bring that curious mind into, we usually hold it in our body somewhere. That contraction, there's like the, Arr! gets in our body somewhere and that's where the subconscious pattern is locked the energy of it and there's a whole bunch of information in there so I help through guided imagery um, to that curiousness to kind of look what's going on it can happen internally like oh gosh I'm really upset because I'm doing this amazing summit and I don't want anything to interrupt these deep conversations I'm about to have and there's that I'm dog making that sound, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm upset, but that's actually, okay, it's because I'm passionate. I'm really concerned. I want to make this as good as I can be. Um, the dog may or may not be able to soothe him through my superpower love bomb skills, you know, but either way, if I can bring some loving kindness, that's the second step. So the curiosity is what's happening, where is it going on within myself? Because truly, we, we can't make any effective change externally if we're holding the mirror of it inside of us, right? We want to try to fix the outside first so that we can quell the inside. But the reality is, if we can bring peace and love and calm and bliss even, you know, the ecstatic bliss of the feminine within, then we can magnify it. Because that's what women do. Like we fill ourselves up and then we serve from this beautiful full saucer. And then it helps, it helps magnify it in the world. So there's, I bring a sense of loving, kindness, and compassion to myself. Oh, okay. I was just mad for a minute. That makes sense. I'm passionate. I want this summit to go awesome. But I can just, you know, whatever. I can't control the dog. So I'm just going to be loving and kind to myself, do the best I can, and know that's all I can do and leave the rest up to the powers that be. And maybe even the loving kindness that I have can echo out there and calm the dog down so the dog gets the love vibe too and calms down. And from there, you know, we get messages. Sometimes when we're just loving and kind and present with internal strife, as soon as we are curious and open and available with a sense of, oh, I'm not going to be harsh to myself or whatever comes up. I'm just curious and, and compassionate. Sometimes it has a big story like, oh, this is a part of me that I've been judging for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it will talk to us and let us know. And we'll see how over time being in a loving relationship, that building that relationship with those parts inside of us that at one point we're like, Ugh, I don't like that part of me. It's a part I need to hide. It's a part I need to push away. It's that why usually it's the wild sacred feminine whose, whose nature is, is powerful. At some point somebody said it's not safe or it's not socially acceptable or it scared somebody. You know, usually the grown-ups get really scared by those, those beautiful creative expressions that children have. Quell that. Shut it up. Be quiet. And so then we think, oh, that's a bad part of myself. And then 
that part is stuck in survival level. So it's not empowered to show up in these bigger, higher conscious ways. It's stuck in a little painful pattern and it's constantly trying to get our attention. We call it self-sabotage. <laughs> and as soon as we access it and hear what the real story is, then it's like, oh, okay, then it's not hiding in the subconscious anymore. It becomes a part of our consciousness. And so it's like this team that's on the same page now. It's a, it expands our consciousness and our awareness of how we work. And uh, then, it, then we're, we've got more energy. We've got more awareness. And it, starts, it all starts with curiosity and an intention to bring loving kindness. And we can use it internally and we can use it externally. I've, I've had people, uh, my clients, use it to shift um, marriages they thought were about to end or really painful relationships with, like, children that they were, you know, constant tension, total 180, super fast. That, that's just so beautiful. My question is next, kind of like whatever. <laughs> I'm excited. Ah, I can't vocalize it. The dog's excited too. I know. It's like, Yay! <laughs> it, it sounds so simple. It sounds so easy. It How is, yeah. can that yeah. have any power to it? How can that really change anything? It's, you know, oh, come on. It's too, you know, that's, yeah. I would love to hear how you, what do you have to say with that? Yeah, well, it is super simple. And once you hear just, you know, the basics about how the subconscious works, and, you know, it all makes sense. You know, um, it's super simple. And the reality is I have shifted so many things. I first started using this with myself. I had an eating disorder. I had body dysmorphic disorder. I had uh, maybe not full-blown obsessive compulsive disorder, but I definitely had a lot of symptoms of it, which is usually a fear of the unknown, you know, that we were trying to control our environment through obsessive behaviors because things feel out of control and chaotic in our environment. And um, in starting, to, you know, started doing this when I was 11 years old and, and cultivating this practice. And as I've done it, I've just seen how fast it shifts. It, I, I've used it in hospitals and it can shift pain, it, physical pain. It can shift, um, you know, parts of ourselves that we've been thinking were horrible and bad uh, over in one hour. I had one client who she's brand new and she's trying to stop a tobacco addiction, which has brought up a lot of shame in it because she doesn't believe it's okay to be smoking tobacco beyond just the health reasons. Like it's not, it's part of her spiritual beliefs that it's not okay. Um, so she had a lot, it was a lot going on emotionally, mentally, and then the physical addiction piece. And she had gone to shamans and done um, soul retrieval work. She had gone to coaches and hypnotherapy and all different kinds of practitioners. And in 45 minutes of our first session, she had accessed the voice of her addiction. And she was like, I have been trying to get to this place for years and with so many practitioners. And I can't say that her addiction went away immediately, but she started to be able to talk. You know, once there's a conscious dialogue with our behavior and what we're doing, it is pretty much every part of us. Even the parts we think that are broken and trying to mess up our lives, <laughs> they want to survive too. They want to be, do more than survive once they realize they can have a healthy, amazing life. They're on board. So mm. the nature of all things is love and beauty and life. It's just that those parts of us get shocked and traumatized into lower levels of behavior thinking that all that's possible is survival, which is, you know, scarcity, you know, it's me versus that person. It's very divisive. It's very painful. It's full of a lot of contraction. Um, but once we can bring it up into the light, it, it, we don't, there's no, con you don't need to convince those parts of yourself to change. They're like, Oh my God, this is awesome. I'm that, that's why 
Wow. Once you access it, it the turnaround is really fast and it, it, it will just take a little bit of time for it to become the default rather than just this new possibility. And so the, uh, this is what's so great about the sacred feminine is what I found is like taking this very gentle, very loving, very kind and soft, slow approach mm. has created the one of the fastest mm. ways to shift painful stuck patterns into new conscious ways of living. And I say almost the fastest because the only thing that I found that's faster is I, I also <clears throat> work with medicine as a minister for medicine path, Native American church. I use plant medicines and those allies even faster quantum. They'll take it even faster, but that, that other than, you know, reaching out to plant allies, I don't know of a faster way to shift um, stuck, painful patterns or even physical pain. Wow. Wow. I would love to, we're, we're getting close to being out of time, but I would love to um, hear a little bit more about the plant allies. Yeah. So uh, in 2002, I started working with an ayahuasquero. So that's a shaman, a Peruvian shaman who works with the plant medicine ayahuasca. And that is a vine she's combined with another plant called chacruna. And the two of them together uh, are used to help. That's their healing plant, their main healing plant for mental, emotional, spiritual, and even physical things like addiction and other diseases. And um, we don't know how they work. Uh, that's not our job. The plants know how they work. That's why we ask them for help. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I could break it down, you know, into the molecular pieces, but really the reality is um, they, they basically help to, I believe they help to kind of pull away the the mundane ways that we are trained to see the world to operate on the human level and kind of help us to see beyond the veil uh, and access those shadow pieces much more quickly and usually if it's done in a safe environment so just like having ayahuasca or just taking you know plant medicines you know getting high on your own that's very risky because we are opening the consciousness up and what comes in if we're not nobody's holding space for us and doesn't know how to do that then whatever you know it's like walking down into the tenderloin district of san francisco naked you know like i don't undefended whatever comes my way but um you know in a safe container with a trained uh, shaman or medicine person uh ceremony keeper then we have access to see much more quickly the shadow and how to move through it, how to make it an ally, how to accept it as an ally and a teacher rather than an enemy. You know, it's just like it, the perception shifts, you know, and then all of a sudden there's this great wisdom that's available. Same with, um, I work also work with San Pedro, also known as Huachuma. It's much more gentle than the ayahuasca. It's very heart opening. And for me, it really shows us our bigger prayer for our life, not based on the fears, you know, like, please don't let me be broke anymore. It's like, oh, help me to live in service that um, is valued in the world so that I'm living abundantly and being of service to the highest good. So it can shift things like that in one ceremony. Wow. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. I... um. I love that. And you know, I, you actually answered par a partial question of mine that I was like toying with asking, which yeah. was, um, and I'm, I'm just going to ask it now because you kind yeah. of answered it. Um, marijuana. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a sacred plant and mm. I feel like it's really misused and yeah. I have trouble with people like, um, and this is just a Paula question. So mm -hmm. I have trouble with like, People who use it just for recreational use, yeah. um, I feel like they're opening themselves up to things. And I, I, I just wanted to hear, because it sounds like you might have a, um, your thoughts on it. You might, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I'll out myself. I really, I am so grateful for cannabis. Um, that's, the, that's the oldest name for it, the Egyptian name for cannabis, uh, for the, that plant. 
Um, yes, it very similarly, it opens our consciousness up and a lot of people don't know how to use it, even in the medical marijuana field, right? They're given a prescription, but not really shown how do you use it to actually heal yourself. And so we open ourselves up. And uh, for me, I went through a deep core healing. I was healing core wounding for like two and a half months. And it was, I was in a depression. I was revisiting deep core wounds and cannabis helped me to get out of bed and meditate and pray and exercise. And, you know, so I pray, I pray, I ask permission. I ask permission with these plants. Is it okay? Is it time? So interesting. And then get the yes. Okay. It's good. And so then I, I bless it and I set an intention with it. And when I use it that way, when I work with it that way, it wants, these plants want to serve us, but they also want to be just like any relationship. They don't want to be taken advantage of. They want to, they want to want us to be in a conscious relationship. And uh, it's definitely like, I know that that plant helped me through. And there have been times when I haven't been super conscious about it and just gotten high for whatever, boredom or whatever. And it takes, it takes it out of me. You know, when, when I'm using it consciously, it gives me so much. It'll be the thing that's like, oh, this week you need to focus on healing the mother wound with your, with your clients. That's what's going to come up. And sure enough, that's the thing, you know, so it, it can definitely tune me in. Um, but I use it to tune in and some people use it to tune out. Mm -hmm. Um, Interesting. And every, you know, everybody's got different uh, plant allies. Um, you know, sometimes uh, ayahuasca is going to be the thing that somebody needs. And for some people, ayahuasca is just not going to be good for them. Some, you know, San Pedro, powerful, you know, ally for some. For some people, it makes them not feel so good. It doesn't really offer enough benefits for them to work. So we're all different, and it's really important to be in a conscious relationship, to ask permission, to really ask your own body, is this my medicine? Um, because even if your best friend or your partner or your community, you know, Medicine Path is my community, and some of my friends are like, I just – that's not my medicine. It's like, okay, that's fine. I still love you, <laughs> you know, um, to just recognize that you know, as long as you're honoring what's right for you, yeah, these, these, all the plant medicines are helpful to the right people at the right time, done in the right circumstances, basically. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. That was, I, I didn't know that we were going to go there, but I mean, that, <laughs> Me that was exciting. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. So we are towards the end of our time. I'm going to turn the rest of it over to you. And if there's anything that we didn't cover that you want to cover, um, go ahead. I know you have a free gift. Um, yeah. Whatever's going on, yeah. the floor is yours. Yes, I have a free gift. Well, first of all, for anybody who's interested in the plant medicines, please feel free to contact me on my website, eloesh.com, E-L-O-E-S-H.com. And uh, I'd be happy to, you know, give you information about that. There's contact uh, information on there. And then, you know, I work with, if you're, if you're somebody who feels like what, you're dealing with the dynamic we were talking about before, where you know you're, you've got, you know, you're a conscious being, you're evolving, you've been working on it for so long, and you have so many great gifts that come out in beautiful ways, and then... Other times it just feels like, gosh, I say one thing, and I, but then I do another, or I'm stuck in a painful, repetitive pattern no matter how hard I try to break out of it. If that is your experience, then you probably have some subconscious patterns that are stuck in survival mode, and um, I would love to support you in breaking through that. Uh, it can be very, very fast. So I have... Um, it's a combination. It's an assessment. So you answer a, bun a bunch of questions that I get to look at the answers to. And then we get 60 minutes to talk. And that conversation will help to give you uh, information about where you may be limiting yourself. So beyond just the subconscious stuff, I also help people to tap into their higher consciousness realm so we can look at what might be possible that you haven't even con conceived of yet. We can look at what are the subconscious patterns that are keeping you stuck in those painful patterns. 
And then um, what are the next steps? And it's also, it's also a conversation of, am I a person that can help you? And are you a good match for the kind of work that I do? And by the end of the conversation, we'll know, do you want to work with me? And if, if, if it's a good match, what is that going to look like? And if it's not, then I often have really great suggestions to send people so that they can move forward. So that once they make the decision, yes, this is me. Yes, I want something different. Then we start the ball rolling and we set it up so that their resistance isn't going to, the old fears don't come in and, and back them out of that decision. So if you're really feeling like, I'm ready, I'm ready to start living my wild gypsy soul, tuning into my sacred self and not listening, not letting the subconscious rule me anymore, then uh, please uh, take advantage. This is a very valuable gift. Um, so it's an assessment and a 60 minute call with me that uh, normally is like a $350 value, but um, that I offer it uh, to special people like you and your community because Thank I love what you. I do. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's beautiful. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So thank you, thank you. What mm -hmm. a pleasure. What a joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, is there anything else before we? I just want to, you know, I just want to send a message to all those who are tuned in that uh, that you have a wild gypsy soul inside of you. If you don't know that yet, you definitely do, and. Um, and taking baby steps to unleash it is okay. You know, you, you don't have the wild gypsy soul. It's not a bandage that has to be ripped off. You can take the little steps towards it until you're like, oh, yeah, I got this. So I just want to give you permission mm -hmm. to do it at the pace that feels right for you so that your fear doesn't overwhelm. You know, it is a powerful path. There's a lot of excitement on the way that can be, turn into fear. And if you just go easy on yourself and be loving and kind and gentle, you're going to do it. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Gorgeous. Okay. So once again, thank you. And yeah. to all of you wild gypsy souls out there, thank ah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited to see you tomorrow. Please um, mm. go on the Facebook group, talk to us, let us know some wonderful takeaways from this exactly. questions. Um, mm -hmm. I know Amanda is on there, so you can mm -hmm. ask questions of her. You can email if you want to, whatever we, we would love to keep this conversation going yes. and sharing and, um, and we'll see you on the next interview. Yay. Bye -bye. Yeah, thanks.